this is our formal formal meeting format. At this I time, this I ask fine, that everyone right? in attendance please yes. silence their electronic devices and phones. I ask my colleagues to acknowledge their presence on the voting board. And it's noted that Mr. McDonald is not here this evening due to a work obligation. At this time, I'm asking everyone to join me in a moment of silence. Please rise as you're able for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We will now proceed with our awards and recognitions. Mr. Edwards. Our first honoree is the state's outdoor track and field champion in the long jump in class six, the biggest schools. Please welcome Cameron Brown, a 2018 graduate from Bayside High School. At the... At the Virginia High School League Championships held in June, Brown finished first place with an incredible leap of 23 feet, 4.75 inches. Brown has been on the school's track team for four years, two of those as team captain. Of the five different college offers, Cameron is now headed to his top choice, Virginia Commonwealth University. There he will major in business management and join the school's NCAA Division I track team. Congratulations, Cameron, Virginia's outdoor track and field champ. Technology Students Association first place winners. Our next recognition is for a team from Tallwood High School that finished first at Virginia's Technology Students Association State Competition in the Biotechnology Design event. Team members are Emily Berkler, Genevieve Corpus, Thomas Dane, Joseph Van Leeuwen, and Kelly Walton. Yes. <laughs> These students won first place by developing an experiment on the effectiveness of using ultraviolet light to destroy the Varona mite, a tick-like parasite that attacks honeybee colonies which pollinates many of the world's crops. The team collaborated with the University of Florida, Virginia Tech, and the Bayer, and the Bayer Corporation Bee Care program. They also work with the Tide Water Beekeepers Association. Their, collusion, their conclusion was <coughs> that UV light can indeed exterminate this tick. Congratulations to these engineering <coughs> and technology education students on this ingenious project. Technology Student Association Future Technology Teacher. One member of that team, Emily Berkler, also won an individual award. Right. She was named the Future Technology Teacher Event Winner. For this event, participants wrote a one-page essay about their hopes for becoming a teacher in technology education or engineering technology. In her essay, Emily wrote, as technology advances, the need to prepare students for careers in STEM fields is rapidly growing, making it essential to have great technology educators in all levels of 
learning. I have been fortunate to have had technology teachers who were extremely dedicated and took the sparks of interest I began with and ignited them into a true flame and passion for technology. Hopefully, this experience would be useful in supporting my goal of encouraging future students to stretch their own abilities while making the process stimulating and fun. Congratulations, Amy. Emily. Emily. Our next honoree is VBCPS Procurement Specialist Carla Smith, who was named the 2018 Buyer of the Year by the Virginia Association of Governmental Purchasing. Since being hired in 2004, Carla has been a driving force behind e-commerce solutions, purchasing autom automation and process re-engineering solutions. She helped switch the division's 86 schools and administrative offices encompassing 400 users to an online e-procurement system. Her work led to reducing the approval time for requisitions from two weeks to approximately three hours. Lastly, due to her understanding of automated systems, she helped convert ordering to a pick and click system, making it easier for schools to purchase items. These are just a few of her contributions to our school division and why she was named the 2018 Buyer of the Year. Nice. Good evening. Next, we, rec we welcome Crystal Pate as we recognize the division's Office of Business Services for two top financial awards. The first award is the Certificate of, it of Excellence in Financial Reporting presented by the Association of School Business Officials International. This award signifies that the school division's comprehensive annual financial report, which we all know as the CAFR, meets high standards for financial reporting and accountability. Equally as important, this award demonstrates a school division's commitment to financial transparency. It's now my turn to tur it's now my turn to uh, my I turn to my colleague to describe the next award but we ask that our honoree remains on stage this team was also recognized with a certificate of achievement for excellence in financial reporting from the government finance officers association or GFOA this is the highest form of recognition because the organization's financial reporting surpasses minimum requirements of generally accepted accounting principles. Instead, the organization prepares comprehensive annual financial reports that evidence the spirit of transparency and full disclosure. According to the GFOA, attainment of this award represents a significant accomplishment by a government and its management. Congratulations to Business Services on receiving these two prestigious awards. Excellent. <laughs> Mrs. Chairwoman, that concludes our recognitions for the evening. Thank you. Oh, gotcha. Oh, sorry. You did fine, though. You did not. All good. I had to. Dr. Spence, we look forward to hearing the superintendent's report. Thank you, Madam Chairwoman, and good evening. And members of the board, I'm pleased to have the opportunity tonight to share with our community five things that they need to know this month. Number one, I'm starting out with really fantastic news. As you may have seen earlier this month, data from the Virginia Department of Education confirms that for the second consecutive year, we will be 100% fully accredited. Yay! This is outstanding news and I do want to congratulate and thank all of our incredible teachers, staff members and administrators who've worked tirelessly with our parents and our students last year to, to achieve this. 
But I also want to say it would be easy to get complacent about this news and to assume that since we've already done it, staying accredited is not that hard to do. But I want to assure everyone that could not be further from the truth. With changes to the accreditation system, including having to show growth in test results and taking into account other factors such as attendance as an example, it's in some ways more difficult to be accredited. So again, I hope our community joins us all in sharing great pride in the school division and this amazing achievement. Second, I do have more great news to share. This year, thanks to the leadership and work of our departments of technology and teaching and learning, we will officially be a one-to-one -one school division with devices ready and assigned for each and every one of the more than 67,000 students in our school division. This advancement is a tremendous asset for our teachers and students as we work to develop and create transformational learning experiences for our children every day in the classroom. Now, to be clear, these devices could never and are not intended to replace the excellent instruction that our children receive every day for from our teachers, but they do supplement and complement that work and open new worlds of opportunity and options inside the classroom. Parents should be on the lookout for more information about their child's device as we head back to school. At number three, I want to encourage our communities to break out their smartphones and download the new VB Schools app. This app is really a one-stop shop for our families. Here they can get the latest news and information from the division. They can check and update their child's lunch account, check in through Parent View and see their child's grades, as well as follow their children's schools for calendars, updates, and news notifications. In addition, the new app has a Report It feature, which is in partnership with our friends at Virginia Beach Crime Solvers, and it allows users to send anonymous tips in, including on school maintenance issues, bullying concerns, social media threats, etc. And then those tips are automatically vetted by the Crime Solvers and sent on to either the police or our Office of Safe Schools as needed. The app is free to download and can be found by searching VB Schools in either the Apple or the Google Play Store. At number four, I want to remind all of our rising sixth graders that in order to begin middle school, they need to have a Tdap vaccine. The Virginia Department of Public Health is helping in this effort, and they are hosting free back-to-school clinics where rising sixth graders can get the vaccine. The last one of the month will take place next Saturday, August the 25th, from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. at the Public Health Building, which is located at 4452 Corporation Lane in Virginia Beach. And finally, at number five, the countdown is on. We are only 21 days until the first day of school. And I have to say, we are looking forward to seeing everyone on Tuesday, September 4th for our first day together. Parents who are looking for information and updates starting this new year can visit our back to school page on vbschools.com. And while there, they can always also look for their child's school's open house or orientation dates where they can go and meet their administrators and teachers for the year. Thank you, Madam Chairwoman. That completes my report. Thank you, Dr. Spence. <clears throat> Madam Clerk, do we have any speakers on agenda items this evening? No, ma'am, we do not. Thank you. The Chair will now entertain a motion to approve our minutes from the June 10th meeting. Motion is made by Ms. Riggs, seconded by Mr. Edwards. The voting board is open. <coughs> Motion is passed. The chair will entertain a motion to adopt the agenda for this evening. The motion is made by Ms. McLeod, seconded by Mrs. Melnick. The board is open. The motion has passed as well. The consent agenda has two items this evening. The first item is the recommendation of the general contractor for the replacement of Princess Anne Middle School. And the second item is the legal services cooperative agreement for fiscal year 19. The chair will entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda. Mrs. Mrs. Holtz has made the motion seconded by Ms. Riggs. The voting board is open. Okay. Ms. Melnick? You have to state why. Um, I abstain from all um, contractor votes or the approval of anything that has to do with contractors. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. 
Under action this evening, we have the personnel report and administrative appointments. At the request of one of our school board members, and if there is no objection, we will vote on two of the administration positions separately. Are there any objections? The Chief of Media and Communications and the Chief, Chief Academic Officer will be separate votes. The Chair will entertain a motion to approve the Superintendent's recommendation for the Chief of Media and Communications Officer. Mrs. Riggs has made the motion, seconded by Ms. Melnick. Is there any discussion? Mrs. Manning. Yes, I would just like to state for the record that I've not even met the, the appointee for Chief of Me Media and Communications Officer. Um, however, I have reviewed the recommendation of the superintendent for the salary, and it is significantly more than the previous Chief of Media and Communications, and it is also significantly higher than our Chief Operations Officer. So for that reason, I cannot support um, this appointee. Thank you. Is there any, any other discussion? <clears throat> Seeing none, the voting the voting board is open. The chair will now entertain a motion to approve the superintendent's recommendation for the chief academic officer. The motion is made by Mrs. Mrs. McLeod, seconded by Mrs. Holtz. Is there any discussion? Mrs. Manning. Um, for the same reason, um, I actually just met uh, the appointee, seems like a wonderful person, uh, but it is, uh, the, the salary is significantly higher than our, our previous uh, director uh, or chief, uh, Dr. Amy Cashwell, and for that reason, I cannot uh, vote for this appointee. Thank you, is there any other discussions? Seeing none, the voting board is open. Okay, uh, the chair will now entertain a motion to approve the personnel and remaining administrative appointments as recommended by the superintendent. The motion is made by Mr. Edwards, seconded by Mrs. Manning. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, the voting board is open. The motion has passed. Dr. Spence, would you like to introduce our new administrators? I would. Thank you, Madam Chairwoman. If I could ask uh, Robert Nikowski to please stand up. You all will recognize Robert. He has served uh, as a teacher in Stafford County, but also here as a teacher at Kempsville Middle School since 2012. He's most recently uh, been appointed to serve as an administrative assistant at Lynn Haven Middle School, and I'm pleased this evening that you've approved our recommendation for Robbie to serve as the next assistant principal at Lynn Haven Middle School. Congratulations. And I understand you have a guest. Thank you. My wife, Austin, is here with me tonight. Thank you for being here. <clears throat> if I could ask Stephen Oberlander to please stand up. You all will undoubtedly recognize Stephen. He has uh, served in addition to his service in the United States Navy as a lead chief petty officer. He has also served as a school counselor here in Virginia Beach, both as a chair at Cox High School and Renaissance Academy, Virginia Hello. Beach Middle School and Lynn Haven Middle School. Most recently, he's been serving as an administrative assistant at Bayside Middle School. And this evening, I'm very pleased you've accepted our recommendation for him to serve as assistant principal at Ocean Lakes High School. Congratulations, Stephen. If I could ask William, Dr. William Washington to please stand up. Dr. Washington has served with distinction as a teacher in Richmond County and as an assistant principal at Rappahannock High School, a director of the Rappahan uh, Rappahannock High School Academy, and most recently as district coordinator of Gifted and Talented and a director of early childhood education in Richmond County. And this evening, I'm pleased you've um, accepted our recommendation for him to serve as the next assistant principal at Bayside High School. Congratulations. Uh, although she's not in attendance, I would like to note that Natalie Allen has been, you have appointed, uh, accepted our recommendation for uh, Natalie Allen to serve as the next chief of staff, uh, excuse me, next chief communications <laughs> officer here in Virginia Beach. She has served as a communications specialist in Henrico County in Baltimore County Public Schools and has served as chief communications officer in Kansas City and as a, also as the chief of staff in Kansas City. So congratulations to Ms. Allen. 
Also, if I could ask Jennifer McGowan to please stand up. Jennifer has served in the finance department at Children's Hospital of the King's Daughter. She's also served as a program services director for the Girl Scout Council of the Colonial Coast and most recently as a recruitment and placement director for the Girl Scout Council of Colonial Coast. And I'm very pleased this evening that you've accepted our recommendation for her to serve as the coordinator of school and community partnerships in the Office of Community Engagement. Congratulations. And I understand that you uh, did bring some guests with you. <laughs> Outstanding. <laughs> Outstanding. And let me go back and correct this. Mr. Uh, Dr. Washington, I believe you brought some guests with you as well. Would you please introduce no. them? I did. I brought my whole world with me today. If I could ask Kelly Padilla to please stand up. So you all will recognize Kelly. She's been in the division for quite some time as a teacher at Luxford and Shelton Park Elementary School, Betty F. Williams Elementary School. She has served as a reading special in the, in the division at Linkhorn Park, and most recently has been serving as an instructional specialist for early reading in the Department of Teaching and Learning. And I am very pleased you have um, accepted our recommendation for her to serve this evening uh, as the new coordinator of elementary language arts in the Department of Teaching and Learning. Congratulations, Kelly. And I believe you do have a few guests with you. Congratulations, Kelly. Thank you. <laughs> and finally, last, certainly, uh, but not least, um, I would like to ask Kip Rogers, Dr. Kip Rogers, to please stand up. So Kip, in addition to being a published author, has served with distinction as a teacher, an assistant principal, an elementary and middle school principal in Newport News, director of secondary instruction in York County Public Schools, most recently as the chief academic officer in Norfolk Public Schools. And I'm absolutely thrilled this evening that the board has accepted my recommendation for him to serve as the district's next, uh, the division's next chief academic officer in the Department of Teaching and Learning. Congratulations, Kip. I believe you also have a guest. I do. I have my better half. No is here. <laughs> Thank you all for being here this evening. And Madam Chairwoman, that, that concludes. Thank you, Dr. Spence. The information part of our agenda is next. And we have several policy review committee recommendations. Welcome, Mrs. Linetti. Good evening, Madam Chair, school board members, and Dr. Spence. I'm Cammie Linetti, school board legal counsel. Cammie. Okay. Again, yeah. <laughs> this 
Linetti, you can proceed. Thank you. Thank you. On behalf of the, of the Policy Review Committee tonight, I have four policies to present to you. The first is Policy 439, having to do with employee professional development and growth and job skills. This is a relook at a policy we looked at earlier last year. We came back and um, added a paragraph under Section B, having to do with release time. This particular section um, recognizes the fact that professional learning activities don't happen necessarily during the contract year, sometimes they're during the summer, and that some of those dates will be employees having to take professional development during that time would be responsible for coming to that. We also noted that it was an ongoing concern for the committee that there are times when employees need to be excused from those and that that would be something left up to the administrator. And so that particular section was act, uh, added in there with the uh, caveat that as long as there was sufficient notice to them provided, they would also have to attend meetings and they could be excused by meetings by supervisors. That was something the committee felt strongly needed to be included in that policy. Policy 465 also deals with media and conferences. We took out Section B C having to do with workshops and in-service training because that appears in another policy that we amended later in the year, so we were just making sure it wasn't duplicative in the policies. Policy 517 is under the student sections. Policy 517 has to do with absences, truancy, and parental notification. You are by law required to enforce truancy. The superintendent's responsibility in the city of Virginia Beach is to ensure that all students are attending school and there are very strict rules and policies that we have to follow with that. We were just doing some cleanup work in this section and putting little minor scrivener's changes having to do with contact information and that there are no significant changes to that policy. Share the last one. Okay, and your last, it's attached to that is policy 517.1, absences and truancies. Again, there were truancy matters, um, a little bit more complicated um, regulations involved in that, and there were scrivener's changes to that. The reason we bring you a regulation is pursuant to Virginia law, when there are matters that involve student discipline and truancy is a matter of student discipline, it is required to go to the school board to look at that regulation. So this will be the one time where you do see a regulation in addition to a policy. Finally, we have policy 521. As you may be familiar with, the um, Virginia General Assembly has done some significant changes. It's been about two years coming, having to do with suspensions on there. The significant change that came out was effective as of July 1 is limiting the time we can do for suspensions. Typically, we consider long-term suspension prior to July 1st to be anything over 10 days and up to about 365 days. Expulsion is different. Expulsion means you're placing a student out. Pursuant to Virginia law, we don't put a student out for longer than 365 days without bringing them back in. But the Virginia law, Virginia Assembly changed the law this year, and as of July 1st, we are limited now to do long-term suspensions between 11 and 45 days. There is an exception to be put in for aggravating circumstances, which will allow us to put a child out for longer than that time period. We are at the Council of School Attorneys. We've been working on drafting what that language should look like, but that would be a regulatory change coming out of it. There are still ways we could put a child out longer than that. We're still trying to get to that with the General uh, the Virginia Department of Education. But it was necessary for us to update this policy 521 to recognize that there is a change in the amount of time we, we do this. 521 is our overall policy on student discipline. We have regulations and policies that go further into doing suspensions, but it's necessary to change policy 521 to do that. So we're recognizing in this particular section the limitation on it. We've done some just clean up on the Scrivener's work on fixing some language that also needed to be cleaned up. But that would be the significant change from that. You will start noticing that as we come up with student discipline this year, there will be some changes in how we're approaching student discipline. Therefore, attached to that, you also see Regulation 521.1. Regulation 521.1 deals with student suspensions and expulsions. This lays out in more detail how we deal with the suspension and expulsion procedures in the school division and just reflects the changes that the General Assembly has placed on us as effective July 1. We are in the middle of Section 5 right now, the Policy Review Committee, so you're going to see a lot of changes having to do with the regulations on students this year and um, probably some other changes. We'll be doing things differently a little bit with student discipline will come out. This, well, this is your overriding student discipline policy having to do with taking a child out of the school setting. So we're just asking that you amend this to reflect what the current change in the law is effective as July 1. Are there any questions I can answer for you at this time? Ms. McLeod? Um, in, the, in this one we were just looking at, it, it actually, I'm sorry, it's, um, 
The one I'm looking at. Aren't you looking at it too, <laughs> Mrs. Lenny? Yes, no, I am. Um, okay. <laughs> um, the, under the student suspensions and expulsion, so 5-21, I guess it is. Um, and there you define very clearly, for the purpose of this regulation, the term parent will be defined to mean or a natural biological parent, legal or adoptive parent, foster. It gives a good definition. What I was noticing as we were sitting going through here, sometimes it, you, you, in the other policies we've just reviewed, mm -hmm. it says parent. Sometimes it says parent slash guardian. Sometimes it says parent slash legal guardian or legal guardian. I just didn't know if it was important to have consistency or this definition at the beginning of all of them. Or I was just going to suggest that we allow you to make all of those corrections any yeah. time with, 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 throughout the you whole see, document. That's a change we need to make. We need yeah. to have in because the policies don't necessarily carry on through with the general definition on them, because this one we felt it was a very long Warranted policy, it, we yeah. did it on there. It would help if we had certain definitions, because that is a term that appears a lot. Because some of our students are adult students, their rights tra transfer to them at age 18, we do have to put the word adult student in there. But yes, it would help if we had an overall definition section for this. So I, I would recommend that we just give you the okay to do it or, or tell the policy committee to make that happen. So, yeah. I'm going to tell you that I need to put the language in there. Otherwise, sure, sure. it's protective. Perfect. Okay, awesome. thank you. I appreciate that. Mrs. Weems? Um, yes, policy 4-39B2. Um, the paragraph that was added, professional, professional development activities may occur year-round and may be required to be completed outside of contract dates and or hours. Um, and then it says it may be excused as determined and they have to be reasonable in number and duration and sufficient notice provided. It's it's kind of vague. I'm just looking at it from a teacher's standpoint. I, I work in the summer or I work on Saturdays and something's called upon for me to do. I mean, how, much of, this, how much of this how much of this is outside of school hours, you know? This, now, this particular one only deals with professional development, so it's when right. we require you to come in because you have to do development on that. And I will mind you, these are contract terms for them. That's part of their contract that they sign that they have to attend this professional development on there. We struggled a lot with this at the committee level as to what it meant, how many meetings right. on there, because there are a lot of other meetings that teachers attend to, and that gets hard. And what do you do if your principal decides at you know, 10 a.m. you have to be at 4 and you don't have child care set up, right. and how do you do that? Or you set up a vacation that you paid for and you needed to get out of it, um, be, uh, get out of the professional development because you didn't have time to um, change vacation plans. So we felt like we couldn't define specifically what it meant, so we left it vaguely. After some talk with Human Resources and with the superintendent's office, we felt that we didn't feel it was being abused at this point, that people misunderstanding it, that the supervisors weren't unfairly imposing um, things that they were calling professional development, making people come in for them. So after wrangling with this for about two or three meetings, we finally decided to leave the, the language neutral like this. So we don't have any specific definition. Okay. Um, okay. Ms. Rye and, and then Ms. Manning. Yes, if I could add to that, uh, this was actually an attempt to provide more parameters uh, because it, it it's not changing practice, but it's it's just providing parameters for supervisors to be, and understanding everybody's professional. So Prince, school administration and teachers, you know, we just wanted a, a way to codify that everybody are adults here and that, and, th and that's why to mention about reasonable and number, uh, sufficient notice because of certain feedback that had been provided to the committee about, you know, certain isolated circumstances where there wasn't sufficient feedback. So again, policy can't micromanage what principals do, but we it serves maybe, and reminder isn't the right word either, but the expectation that everybody as professionals can, can work these things out. And we even got into discussions about, I mean, people now can participate by speakerphone for meetings. I mean, we're in a, this isn't, you know, it, you don't have to physically be present. You can participate in a meeting, and th it's time to, to to think these things through too. And that was part well, of the if, nature if of the discussion. Well, if a teacher's on a vacation, I don't expect her to participate well, by phone on vacation. Well, <laughs> well, and that was the whole point about sufficient notice, so yeah. that as an administrator, you have four teachers you need to get together, ask everybody up front who's going to be away when, and we think reasonable people can work these things out. Okay. Thank you. Mrs. Manning. Yeah, I, 
I have some trouble with this one too. I just think that it's a little too vague and I'd like a little bit more protection for our teachers if they have a vacation planned. You know, sufficient notice could be, I'm gonna tell you the beginning of June that we're gonna have a professional development meeting in the middle of August, but because you're on summer break, you've already scheduled a vacation. Um, so, you know, I don't know what the, what the change in language would be, but I'd like for that to be looked at again. Maybe some of the teachers on the board would have some input. I, I can tell you that um, I was present for this meeting and I struggled with this one as well for the very same reasons that you're bringing it up. Um, and I, and I, I kind of agree that I feel like this, this, this one probably needs to go back to the committee and let's think about some other language that might not pin somebody down into having to come back and August 1st for a meeting just because three of the other teachers on your grade level have said they are, they're available. I, I, I agree. Let, I, I think maybe we should bring this one back. Again, say that it was because of us that this got put in in the first place, thinking of the teachers, but policy can't, isn't intended to micromanage manage what principals do. Uh, and we went around, so we, we we used the input we got from teachers, and we have some teachers on our policy committee. And I, I do believe that this this serves all those purposes to the best extent that a policy can. We can take the back. I will tell you, we did struggle with this particular issue. And when we talked about with human resources and all, it didn't appear that there are a lot of complaints about abuses of that. And if you did have a complaint with that, there is, there's a process, there's grievance processes that you can deal with that. So we didn't feel like this was an ongoing problem. We realized that people might perceive it's a problem, but in actuality, we don't see this as being an ongoing problem. We just don't have that many people reporting that this is an issue for us. And we felt that if they had a concern, this would allow them to deal with that. Uh, we can take it back, but I would would you suggest you provide some guidance to the PRC members of what you think is a reasonable amount of time because if it was one type of development that's fine but there were just so many areas we didn't feel like what we could define what a specific amount 10 days 20 days two weeks on that and again uh, I know it, it, it perceive people might perceive it as a problem but we are not receiving complaints about ongoing issues with um, employees are being forced to come to professional development outside of hours that they can make mr. Edwards <clears throat> My, my comments are not on 439, so if there's anybody else speaking to that, maybe they should go ahead. But Ms. McLeod. Thank you, back Mr. Edwards. Um, actually, um, I was going to ask you what you just defined for us. What would be reasonable? What would be sufficient? And at every school and every employee, it may be, I think it's fair to say that, uh, as she's brought up as professionally, um, they, they made to look at this. The other part of, you know, I know that in a, in a typical or outside of an academic, we have to look at, you know, who else is on vacation at the same time and make sure everything there's coverage and, and different things. I know this is about professional development specifically, but I, um, I don't know how we would get someone. Every opinion would be different in regard to what is reasonable. The concern, um, well, I wouldn't want to have a, a administrator who was so rigid that it was only two days or something like that. So that would be the only concern. So I don't, I don't know where to tell you to guide, but I want to give the policy committee guidance. I mean, but I, I would have no clue because each training would be different and it would be a different time of year. So for example, I might say a sufficient notice for a, a, a professional development during the school year, but is this only during outside of it that we're talking, would this yeah. one apply no, this to this is all professional only, development. But I mean, is this number two only about outside or does it also address during it's contract an, time? Any professional Any time, okay. So, that, so it might be during the contract time, during the actual school week kind of thing, I might feel two days was enough notice because hopefully they can find someone or it gives them time to let them know I can't find a babysitter I've tried or things like that. But if it was over the summer months, I would expect before a teacher ever left the school year of the previous school year to know any expectations for the summer. So I don't know how you, I think sufficient explains that because I don't know how you would do days in there because you'd have to have an example for every possible situation which is exactly why the policy committee left it vague. My only comment would be are you trying to craft a solution for, or create a problem for a solution? You don't have. Yeah, I don't exactly. know that we have I, So I guess what I'm trying to say is I am good with this just because I rambled about all the, the crazy what ifs and we don't have the problem of it. 
Manny. Miss Manny, is it on it's this on one? It's on this also? one. I have, I just had an idea. <laughs> what if we put language in there to say, um, uh, the activities would not conflict with an employee's previ previously scheduled plans or vacation or something like that? Well, maybe the if expectation you, of the administrator. Maybe if you could send your suggestions to yeah. okay. Mrs. Rye. Sure. Yeah, I think that would require something. Because my problem is we have employees that schedule vacations during the school year and they, they want to take time off. It's a week. I can't. I don't know that and a principal could say I have to stop at November 1 because you decide to take an early Thanksgiving <laughs> break. And a, right. So, Mr. Edwards, we're back to you. Yep. On, on the current discussion 439, I'll just say we may be sinking well below the governance level into the management level. Um, on 521, I just wanted to uh, comment for those that might be listening, and I know all my colleagues are fully aware, we are not, the change in suspension timelines that is now the law of the, the law of the Commonwealth is going to have virtually no impact on Virginia Beach. We almost never uh, suspend anybody without services. Uh, period. Um, there may be a short period of time while they're awaiting uh, an, an opportunity to appeal. Um, but we, you know, we, we, as a practice, provide services that may be in an alternative setting, but um, almost never do we suspend anybody for 45 days um, or even much less than that. So uh, the wording that the, that the board uses and in, in, uh, principals use in uh, initial assignments will be different, but the uh, opportunities for our students will remain robust in terms of opportunities to, uh, even uh, under disciplinary situations. When the General Assembly put this bill through, they were trying to address school divisions that do not have the alternative education opportunities you have, which there were some very dramatic cases, certainly never been a case for us in Virginia Beach. Very few the Tidewater area schools have these issues, but there were simply schools that put you out and the child would be without education. We pointed out to them, you need to, rather than do this, you really should be looking at what we're doing in Virginia Beach, which is requiring that they have alternative education programs. This bill went through anyway, and so we're trying to adjust to it. it really really doesn't reflect our practices. We are doing what is expected from us, but we are now having to deal with this law that doesn't really address how most school divisions of Virginia handle things. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Lanetti. Are there any other, Mrs. Manning? Yeah, on that same one, on 521, you mentioned that there are some exceptions of aggravating circumstances. However, I did not see that stated anywhere in the policy. Shouldn't well, we have that in there? because when the General Assembly put this law through, they did not define that what aggravating <laughs> circumstances are, right. so there'd be could, fine. Could we write, um, with the exception of aggravating circumstances, defined by the General Assembly? We can probably <laughs> add that. Like that. I've been um, one of the attorneys for, uh, at the statewide level who's been drafting the wording for it. We're expecting Virginia Department of Education to put that out in the next couple of weeks, but they kind of did this backwards, and so we're hoping to get that in place. Um, but we're, it's not been finalized yet, so um, we can put in language doing um, pending that. By, hopefully by the time this comes back, I maybe actually have that language. <laughs> For you to yeah, I'd you. like to have something in there with that exception if we can. Okay, Thank any you. other comments or suggestions? Thank you, Ms. Lanetti. Thank you. <coughs> Madam Clerk, do we have any standing, I'm sorry. Next, do we have any standing committee reports to the board? Mrs. Riggs. Um, the sister cities had um, our youth ambassador from the Tallwood Academy to sing at the um, um, Dancing with the Stars Saturday night. So she represented our schools very well. She has a beautiful voice and she was um, part of the entertainment. So um, I'm very proud to say that we have one of our students that is representing our school system with Sister City so well. She's Emily Myers and she does a super job. She is uh, an upcoming junior and she has a fantastic voice. So thank you. Yeah, Any other? Tallwood Academy. Any other reports? This is Rye. Uh, yes, due, uh, the July policy review committee meeting was canceled due to a combination of professional and personal conflicts among committee members, but we are resuming uh, this week on Thursday with our August meeting. Thank you. 
Any others? Mr. Edwards. The uh, ad hoc committee for the Achievable Dreams um, met this afternoon, and um, we are uh, progressing ahead and tasked the uh, both the Achievable Dreams staff and our staff uh, with legal counsel to uh, develop some parameters <coughs> through which we can uh, develop some alternatives and, op and options to be brought to the board. Thank you. Any other reports? That concludes our formal part of our meeting this evening. <clears throat> Madam Clerk, do we have any speakers on non-agenda items this evening? Yes, ma'am, we do. We'll transition into that portion in just a moment. Thank you.